But how do Amaryllis and Snap end up playing this children's game in the first place? Well, to answer that, we first need to talk about this meritless shit stain. Callum is introduced in episode 5, bullying Parnell, off screen, and is generally painted as obnoxious troglodyte. Why were you crying? You know, Cal? Uh, big, terrible hair, smells like onions. He's my cousin. He can be mean. I'm sorry, Parnell. He's a real jerk. This episode acts as his proper debut. He already faces an uphill battle as far as the audience opinion is concerned. But that's a silly concern, for he obviously isn't meant to be an actual character, but rather a straw man punching back. Out of my way, lizard. I'm a dragon! Mm. No, lizard, dumb lizard. Who even are you? I'm Cal. And you're even cuter at second glance. Bar! You step away from the bird. <laughs> Out of the way, eh, lizard, eh, eh, dumb lizard, eh. Who talks like that? He's written like a literal caveman. This is just embarrassing. I can't imagine how anyone could lower themselves to act out this dialogue. I for one would refuse to recite this trite. Ad-lib something. Anything would be better than this. Have some fucking respect for yourself. Also, Cal apparently doesn't have the spatial awareness or motor skills to walk around Rosemary, and his attention jumps from annoyance to horniness back to annoyance in the span of two seconds. This depiction is not even at parody level anymore, because even satire of the traditional meathead types usually includes a thing called jokes. So why don't you make like a tree and get out of here? Anyway, later on Cal's single-minded horniness leads him to fall for the trap that is Snapdragon for the evening, and he has this ridiculous meltdown. Hey girl. You're really tipping the scales of sexy. I hope you're single. We'd be fantastic together. Uh, Cal? Wait, Snapdragon? You, dude, why are you dressed like a girl? I, I, that's, this is messed up. You're messed up. Funeral director, huh, Cal? <laughs> you better get out of here before the funeral becomes your own. I, I'm obviously dressed as a groom. Who'd want to marry that? These things happen. Most everyone makes themselves seem silly at one point or the other. There's no reason to be untactful. Just back away, laugh at yourself, and move on. Nothing is gained by making the situation into a bigger deal than it is. This applies to any and all kind of awkward situation. Best to just let it go. And I would hazard to guess that most people know better than to start foaming at the mouth if faced with this particular setup. But no, Cal is horrid in all the ways, so he just has to rave and rant and be the biggest ass a guy can possibly be. And this makes Snap the big sad, because he secretly wishes that everyone would be okay with him acting the part of a girl. Time to turtle up and play some video games. And here lies this show's biggest world building mistake. I'm serious. This is the topic the show's creators care about above all else. Snapdragon's identity crisis and diversity and acceptance as a whole. They wish to tell a story about the struggles of being a trans person, discovering oneself, the prejudice of people, all that stuff. And the show fails to back up any of the alleged drama. Snap is supposedly so insecure about himself and unable to be who he feels on the inside. Except he really shouldn't be. This entire world is remarkably accommodating. Everyone accepts everyone. There's no overt racism, sexism, any of the like. And the few people who showcase any kind of bigotry are universally condemned by the good characters. Caraway is comfortable casually revealing her past to Rosemary, and her reaction is lukewarm to say the least. This world at large clearly has no problem with the alphabet community. The lesbians are allowed to be out in the open without anyone hassling them. 
No one aside from Cal bats an eye at Snap's costume, his best friend, the known rich bitch and a bully, is 100% supportive of Snap every step of the way. I... I shouldn't have worn this. Snap, you're a fabulous mermaid goddess challenger and, 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 and you're great. And who cares what Cal says? His costume is a suit. Let's go smash shit till you feel better. Snap, are you still upset about the whole Cal thing? Rill, keep your voice down. <sighs> Lingars, lil guards? This game's for like newborns. Nobody's gonna come over here. But if it'll make you feel better. What are you doing? Making sure nobody and nothing can hear or touch us. Now talk! Take down the spell. Not until you tell me what's wrong! I don't want to! Let's just play the game. Ugh. Fine! But I'm keeping the spell up so I can curse freely. Same goes with Snap's soon-to-be girlfriend. Sage is absolutely filled with butterflies at the sight of Snap in her feminine glory. Snapdragon? Hey, Sage. It was Amaryllis's idea. You just look so pretty right now, okay, bye! The mere idea of him being a lady makes Sage cream. <laughs> Snapdragon should consider himself the luckiest person in the kingdom to have found the one girl in the entire academy as his first girlfriend, who just so happens to be bi, and is prepared to stand by him come what may. Who am I kidding? Everyone in this show is gay or bi, or whatever the story demands for them to be at the moment. We wouldn't want anyone's decisions to have any kind of serious consequences now, would we? Everyone who actually matters in this universe loves Snapdragon unconditionally. Cal is the dumbest variety of ass there is, but that's the reality of life. Dumbasses will always exist. None of us can change that, other than this outlier case and the literal supervillains. This world is almost a utopia. Dozens of races, different types of people, all living in peace and harmony. There is no conflict. Snap's struggle is the same as if the show claimed that Parsley struggles with racism against dwarves. Even though literally no one is racist against dwarves. And to underline this as fiercely as I can, because people tend to be hilariously deranged, depressingly unintelligent, Unable to understand the meaning of words spoken in plain English. My criticism isn't, Oh, how dare you put trans people in your show? That has never been my criticism. That will never be my criticism. My problem is the fact that the show's narrative and world building are diametrically opposed. This is the issue on the creator's minds and they can't be arsed to put in any effort. The drama does not work, it is artificial, it is hollow. It is created because this is the author's distorted view of our world. In their mind, everyone is against them, even though they are living during the most tolerant age in human existence when it comes to their lifestyles. We live in an age where misgendering someone can earn you a prison sentence, and this same kind of tolerance from our world is mirrored in Lingarf. The fact that there is a commemorative picture prominently placed upon the Academy's wall, which reveals Caraway's past, should be a clear indication that these issues are not new, they are not special, they are normalized in this world. And yet, this identity crisis is still made up to be some kind of Herculean hurdle to cross. One jackass says mean things, and Snap is broken. This single utterly worthless creature makes fun of him, and it's as if the whole world is ending. Snap is weak in spirit. He should not be training to be a guardian. Someone who is supposed to help the helpless cannot be this brittle. I said this about Sage back in episode 5, and it's the same thing here. This kind of victim mentality should be beaten out of each and every single one of the students 
on their first day. Snap should work through his woes in peace before handling any kind of weapon with the pretense of protecting others from harm. Someone with so much mental burden is going to be a liability and end up hurting themselves. Or someone else. He is a stupid kid and all the teachers are criminally irresponsible. The show itself doesn't give these issues the proper gravitas, nor do they examine it from any other angle than filling their quota for representation. Also, all traditional hetero men are bigoted cavemen herder. They simply focus on the misery porn, painting their meek opposition as utter demons, rather than offering anything of actual value, a realistic story of true adversity, self-reflection and growth. This is the show's unapologetic, anachronistic agenda. And before any of you say anything about Snapdragon's background and family life, we'll get to that in due time, oh don't you worry. And as always, a massive thanks to each of you for listening till the end. The continued support is very much appreciated, and a special thanks goes to all the supporters on Patreon, as well as an extra special thanks to my 10 euro supporters, Wyland, Jesaja Vanderwatt, Six Stars, and Taugrin. If you would like to join these fine people, or check out any of my other creative stuff, all the links are down below. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.